Ghana is about seven months away from its general elections. Now, the Electoral Commission has rolled out its calendar towards the December 7 polls. The Commission's challenges offer the opportunity to take stock, fix problems and hopefully have a history general election. But this isn't the election management body's first rodeo. So why do we continue to face the same problems despite millions of dollars sunk into building a secure and efficient election management system? That's our focus on Hot Issues. I am Kemeni Amano. In this edition, I sat with a major stakeholder in Ghana's electoral process. Over the years, he's observed, he's reported, and even authored recommendations, some of which have fallen on deaf ears. With the teething errors the EC has experienced since the beginning of the 2024 electoral calendar, we ask, could we be headed for a roller coaster general election? My guest in this edition is National Coordinator for the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers, Kodeo for short, Albert Ahim. Thank you so much for joining us here on Hot it's Issues. My pleasure to be with you. Why has Kodeo gone soft on the Electoral Commission? I don't think so. Kodeo hasn't gone soft on the Electoral Commission. If for anything at all, people have even been criticizing me in mm. particular. You know, I came from the Electoral Commission. Mm -hmm. I used to work there as the director of elections or mm -hmm. director of operations for the Electoral Commission. Mm -hmm. And um, some of my colleagues have been telling me I'm so harsh on the commission. I've been very harsh on them. Maybe before, not now. Your critical voice has been missing in the case of mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, allegations of procurement breaches. It's the back and forth between the Electoral Commission and the NDC and Imani Africa. Your critical voice has also been missing uh, in the case of the missing BVRs, unwritten BVRs. Why is that? I don't think so. Mm. I don't think so. If we are not coming out to criticize or maybe lambaz them, it may be because we don't have the facts sometimes. You may not have the facts to, to actually, you know, maybe go in to criticize. And it will be very embarrassing when you don't have uh, an insight into something and then you just go in there mm. to criticize. No. But, when it is necessary to criticize the EC, we do. Mm. And in I, fact, I mean, I'm not the only one at the EC. It, it has been necessary in the last few weeks to hear some critical voice from, you know, Kodeo, but we haven't seen anything. You still don't have the facts of the matter? I don't think so. I don't think so. But, um, and again, Kodeo is a board, okay? Mm. Kodeo is a board. Mm -hmm. At the moment, the board hasn't met for some time now. Okay. Okay, so I believe if there's anything to be discussed with regards to what you're talking about, mm -hmm. it will be raised. Mm -hmm. And the appropriate, you know, uh, replies or maybe criticisms or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. will come. So, I, so but for I mean, now, I don't think uh, we've had to do any criticism of the, the BVRs thing and whatever, no. Mm, I see. It, so. so it is by choice because, you know, the board hasn't met yes, to look into these issues. Yes, for some time now, issues. the board hasn't met to look at these issues, uh, to be honest with you. The board okay. hasn't met. Okay. Yeah. But, but, I mean, you have experience mm -hmm. from the Electoral Commission. You've heard how the, you know, issues have gone on mm -hmm. uh, yeah, as far as the missing BVRs and issues of procurement and, and the back and forth between the Electoral Commission yeah. and uh, the NDC. I mean, is that standard? Is, is that what it should be? Um, what you're saying, for example, was mentioned at the IPAC meeting. Mm -hmm. It's not only Kodio that you know, was at the IPAC meeting, CSOs, Absolutely. all other people were there. The issue of the BBRs or the missing um, laptops mm -hmm. came on some time ago, about two, three weeks ago when we had an IPAC. And the EC's reply was that they were even the first to announce this. Right. They reported the loss of the, of the uh, what is it, the, the what is, uh, Of the devices. Of the devices, mm. yes. 
And so when it went to parliament, they discussed it and so forth and so on. And they said that the people had been handed over to the police. Okay? So when you hand over people to the police and the police is doing its investigation, I don't think it would be prudent to be also commenting on some mm. of these things. You might be cited for contempt if you are not careful. So if Kodeo is quiet, it could be that we want to listen to what is going to come out of the police investigation. Mm. Because one, the, the EC is saying that the computers don't contain anything. They don't have any, any, any serious um, items on them that will jeopardize the registration mm. process. But I, I mean, I want to ask you, yeah. you have worked there before. The explanation we have heard from the Electoral Commission, the procedures that have been kick-started yeah. uh, since the devices got missing, yeah. do they make sense to you? Is that the way they should have done it? According to them, it was reported, and then the people who were supposed to be working on it, I understand they were working on it in either a warehouse or something, and then some of them got missing. Okay, so it was immediately reported, and that is the obvious thing that should happen. Mm. As to whether there were people watching over it and they didn't take good care of it or whatever. I mean, but, but, but when you look at it, uh, this, the current electoral commission has had more security than when you were there. That's true, because they have uh, people placed at the entrance. And, but you see, I once told somebody that once we were at the commission, mm. Mm, when a whole engine of a vehicle at the yard where the vehicles are normally serviced, an engine was taken out through the gate with the security there. And the conclusion is just that there was a connivance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this reference that you have just made, it is also possible that these laptops were taken with the connivance of other people. And this thing normally happens with any other establishment. You can have people seated who will be uh, a party mm. to whatever theft is going on there. It's normal mm. in, in, in work environments. We're going to come back to the subject. But this yeah. week, mm -hmm. uh, the Electoral Commission wrapped up the limited voter registration exercise. I want to hear Kodeo's assessment. What's yours, your assessment of the event? Yes. Um, we came out with a preliminary report. Mm. And in that report, we said, for the first two days, for example, it was not going smoothly. In the sense that some of the equipment were not working well. The internet was not giving them good receptions and you know, people were doing offline registration and so forth and so on. So initially it was chaotic, especially even with the uh, the areas they considered as uh, being difficult. Our people got there and they hadn't even reached there. They, the EC hadn't reached. Some also got there and they had changed the venue for the registration. So there were initial hiccups. But what I admired about them was that they picked up. Right. The EC picked up, listened to all the advice. And for example, the machines that were not working well were, some were repaired, some were replaced. Mm. So the exercise took off again. And uh, till the day they finished, mm -hmm. I think everything was working very well. The only problem that I see, and that I've been talking about for some time now, is that we are still having a lot of people doing the guarantor system of registration. And I have often said that till the time that I was with the EC, and even till today, I still don't consider that system as a good one. Because the parties take advantage of it, and you only see people going around, for example, in the vehicle. They get to a registration center, they get down, they see people there, maybe their own people. And then they will be told that, oh, these people are here, they need someone to guarantee for them, and so forth and so on. And then they will do it immediately. 
whether they are their cousins, their nieces, or whatever it is, mm. it's, it's, it's not anything they even bother. So the guarantee system is problematic? It's abusive. And the parties are happy because it gives them the opportunity to bring in people. Okay, so I was happy when the EC said they were going to use only the ID issued by the NIA to do this kind of exercise. Unfortunately, when it went to Parliament, it failed to, to register. Right. So, and if you listen to what happened yesterday at the IPAC, mm -hmm. 63 percent of people who registered used the guarantor system. 63 percent, mm. which I think is too high. Right. So, the question you will ask yourself is, the NIA told us some time back that they had given about 17 million of these cards. Where are the cards? Are they lying down? People are not collecting. For example, those that they have finished, are they not collecting them? Why is it that till date, people are still not using these cards to go and do it? So if it was very high up, then of course that's the reason. Mm. People are very, very comfortable. Right. Since you have brought us the subject of the IPAC meeting, let's look at it and, and hear what else the Electoral Commission told you about the exercise. Um, you say they, they have men they mentioned that 63% of uh, you know, the registrants use the guarantor system. Mm -hmm. um, how did they also explain their issue of multiple registration you know, because they went wholly offline for two days? The UC staff were told if the internet wasn't coming, you, you do the offline registration. Mm -hmm. But I'm told that most of the time, you know, a lot of them didn't even use the offline thing. They waited till they got it and they continued, okay? My worry is that, you see, the question you just asked me about the... Uh, multiple registration. Multiple registration. Mm -hmm. When you go and the BVG is there, the device is then you have done it before. It will, it will bring you out. It will clearly show that you have registered. And you see, the double registration wasn't that much. I think they didn't record a lot of the double registration. The problem at the center was a minor registration and then the guarantor thing. Mm -hmm. I believe you heard of the, of the Tamale where uh, they were, there was a gunfire. So Why do we, at this time in our history, do registration of voters and people will fire a gun? I, we'll, we'll talk about the violence, but it, b based on the account you have given, yeah. uh, how do we trust the electoral role at this time? Is that a, you know, a source of concern to uh, Kodeo? Yes, uh, it's a concern in the sense that you can't let people cheat the system to get onto it when, for example, they could have done better, okay? When you have a good register, you can be assured of a good election. A register that is very foolproof, everybody goes there, you mention your name and your name is found easily, incontrovertible, that is a register that can always be relied on. Not a register where somebody goes and then he's told that, oh, your name is in the other polling station or Sometimes you may have a register with a whole lot of people's names appearing in another region. So a register is very important to every electoral commission because that will ensure peaceful, reliable election at the end of the day. So if people are using some wrong tactics mm. to make sure their names are entered, then, then it is not, it's not a, good, a good thing. So again, I'm having a headache over that. Will Kodeo consider, uh, you know, the uh, register from the, you know, the first phase at this point credible? You mean what they just did? What they just did. No, the it's information Why collected not? is credible. It's credible. It, despite the minors on the road. The minors. Despite have the multiple registrations. A lot of them have been challenged. The minors, a lot of them have been challenged. And they are going to appear before the adjudication committee. Again, there's going to be what they call adjudication. Mm? Mm -hmm. And in that process, I've been invited. In fact, I just saw the invitation on my phone. Right. We're going to go there. They will show all the double registrations. 
minus, you know, people they consider to be minor, their pictures will be shown. Mm -hmm. And it's not only Kodeo that is going to be there. Right. The parties are also going to be there. Representatives of the parties are going to be there. The EC itself will be there. Some CSOs are going to be there. And these things will be shown to all of us. When will the adjudications begin? Um, somewhere in June. I've gotten the date. Sometime I just saw it in a flash mm, about I adjudication. Uh, and it's, it's something normally done after every registration, where the machine comes out with double registrants, mm -hmm. minus, and then it is shown, and then we look at it, and then we take decision on them. So if we see that this is truly a minor, then that card is rejected. On the subject of credibility, uh, we know that the Electoral Commission has suffered tabulation errors. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, the Chief Commissioner uh, told... The, the, the Electoral Commissioner herself? Yes. Mm -hmm. She told us that uh, the, they have decided to abandon Coral Draw to go for uh, Excel, Excel spreadsheets. Yeah. Does it make sense to you? Yesterday, this thing came up. Mm. Actually, it's quite embarrassing, anyway. And people were even suggesting that heads should rule at the EC. For those who were engaged in, in the act of not being able to compute, just adding figures. I think they were doing it manually. That is what came up. If it was a manual thing, then it was, not, it was bad. Mm. At this time, day and age, you cannot use the Excel is there. So why do you resort to manual calculation for such things? And mind you, this is not the first time the ECA has made a mistake. Mm. It's been occurring these Absolutely. days. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, not just these days, in 2020. Uh -huh. we it's saw embarrassing. The yes. And, and it's something that should be, an end should be put to this. And the commissioner herself was sorry yesterday, and she had to apologize. Okay. To but did they explain exactly what is going on with the tabulation errors? No, it was just that people were not, they were just careless, according to what she said. Mm. They were using the manual thing to do it, and it, it wasn't going on well. Oh, I see. They were just careless. But did you ask the question of why they are using the manual? And I'll explain why I'm asking you that. We have spent millions of dollars to upgrade our system, to think that we are still manually entering data. And now we want to use a, uh, you know, spread, Excel spreadsheet. We don't know if it's the free version or it's the <laughs> bot version. It is. But, but, you know, it, it begs the question, what did we use the money for? Did you ask that? No, I couldn't ask because um, normally we are not allowed to be asking questions during our PAC meetings, mm -hmm. the CSUs and whatever. But the party people were very concerned about this and they were probing further. I mean, that is why I'm telling you that somebody even suggested that heads should be ruled that people should be dismissed for you know, such acts. And I'm telling you, the commissioner herself wasn't happy mm. about this. Considering that you know, tabulation is one of the concerns that you had raised in mm -hmm. your recommendations for 2020, um, breakdown of machines you had raised in mm -hmm. 2020, we continue to see that despite all the money we have sunk into this. Yeah. Is the Electoral Commission efficient? You know, do you know what's happening right now? Kodeo is doing a project. And yesterday, in fact, I even uh, hinted the electoral commissioner that will be coming to visit here. There's a program, there's a project of trying to find a better way of correcting mistakes that are made, for example, in results tabulation okay. at the EC, if they should occur. Right. Not only at the police station, but even from the collision center to whatever regional center to the national Let's Police. learn a bit more about this project yeah. when we come back. Don't go away. My guest in this episode is National Coordinator for CODEO, the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers, Albert Ahim. Uh, again, thank you so much for your patience. You were telling us about this project yeah. that will you know, effectively deal with uh, the tabulation areas. Er, 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 areas, areas. Yeah. This is a project that the European Union is doing in collaboration with, the, with CODEO. You remember very well what happened the other day when an announcement was being made about the last election result. 
And uh, there was an error, which was quite embarrassing. So in our report, we are saying that we have some challenges for addressing you know, these medium to long term uh, challenges of mm -hmm. the whatever. So what do we do when somebody makes a mistake? A presiding officer makes a mistake. And then, for example, the mistake was made at a time when the other colleagues, that is the uh, agents, have left. Okay? You made a mistake. The result was announced. And later it was detected that it was a mistake. What do you do? Mm. So, we are trying to work out with the EC. That, mm. for example, you announced that this result was this when it wasn't actually that way. Can you just verbally say that, I'm sorry, I, I, I made a mistake and everybody will just take it like that? No. Mm. Just like when you go to the bank and you make a mistake in your check, you may cancel it, sign at the top or whatever. In the same way, we would want to have a system where you are announcing the result on a pink sheet or whatever, or you are writing on a pink sheet and there's a mistake. What do we do? Mm. So... We are going to design with the EC okay. a method, for example, of correcting the error mm. so that anybody who comes later to see it can remove it and say that, oh, this was the mistake that was first made and then this is the correction that has been made. Either by the color of the, mm. the sheet that was used to differentiate between the corrected one and the, the, uh, the one that is in error. So this is what we want. We are going to discuss it at every stage of the mm. exercise, whether police station or whatever. When you make a mistake, do you have evidence to show that this is what you did to correct it? I'm saying this because, you know, sometimes you'll be in the operations room when results start coming from the, the regions. Right. And you see that there is a tabulation error. Those days when I was the director of elections, when you saw it, all you did was to call the regional director and tell him that, no, this thing is bad. It has to be redone. Mm -hmm. So whoever are agents of the parties there, bring it to the attention. Let's do it. Do the correction and send it back to right. us. Yeah. So in the same way, we want to do it, but this time in a refined way, because we don't have any... Uh, so, so who's bearing the cost for this It's project? the European Union. The European Union. Yeah, it's, it's a sponsored thing they are using. And it's not only the result thing. There are other, other things that I will mention. Uh, this is, and this is outside all the money we have spent. In, no, this in, is not coming from uh, no, <laughs> outside the budget that Ghana has given to the EC. No, no, not just the budget. Outside the money we have spent to upgrade our system. If we didn't put that in place... And it would even appear that some of our political parties are more advanced in tabulation than the Electoral Commission. Then you have to answer the question as to whether or not the EC is as efficient as it would want us to believe. You see, I don't think that you would be right in calling them inefficient at this stage. But what's an Electoral Commission see, without, without having correct scores, without its, yeah. you know, getting its tabulation correct? What's an Electoral Commission without its let, let me, you see... The lady who was announcing the result of the election made a slip of tongue. Yeah. Why won't we build a system mm -hmm. that will rather be foolproof of errors, you know, avoidable errors? That is what everybody is aiming at. And I'm sure the EC itself would not want to have errors. So what they are now saying as part of this project is that there should be people well, very well trained. Uh -huh. You remember... A, there was a time the lady was talking about bringing some accountants to... For example, if you go to South Africa, mm. whenever there's an election, there are people who go over mm. the results that have been tabulated or calculated and they make sure that everything is perfect. Are we recruiting the wrong people? It could be we are not recruiting the right people. Let me give you an example. Um, you, you could be... Also having people who are biased. You see, the recruitment that, that they do, you, you cannot always get the right kind of people. Mm. And let me tell you also that the people they recruit to do this work for them are not permanent staff. Okay? They are not permanent. They normally recruit largely from the Ghana Education Service. The teachers are the ones, and they are trained differently. So maybe 
what they have to do is to make sure they're training. If it's one day, they should increase the number of days that they train them. And the training should be well done, such that people will be very well vexed in whatever they will be doing. Okay? Okay. So, if they are well trained and they are put at the centers to do calculations here and there, sometimes eh, they even cannot write the, the figures in words. Some of the electoral officers? Officers, yeah. They cannot write them correctly in words. Mm. It's because, you know, you, you don't know them. You just one day went in and said you needed presiding officers, you needed pulling as agents or assistants and you picked. With the return officers, they conduct interviews. Mm -hmm. But with the other poll staff, there are so many. Right. If you want to conduct interviews to get the right material, you might find it difficult. What is Kodeye's observation of the educational qualification of those we meet when we go to vote? I would say it's better these days. It's better in the sense that an effort has been made that they should recruit people of high quality mm. education. Okay. H and D. Is it the same people who can write no, no, they, in words? No, no. I'm talking of those days. These days, and a conscious effort is being made. You know, their attention was drawn to the fact that if you go to Nigeria, for example, you have principals, headmasters, being absolutely being presiding officers, ten officers, or whatever. Why can't Ghana do that? And same? this is what we are now been telling the the letter commission that this is the caliber of people who can deliver. They, they, they sacrifice, they want to do it, so they go in there to do it. And what's the response you're getting from the, uh, you know, the electoral commissioner? No, he's going to do that. In fact, it's part of the reform that was being carried about. But when? Because if she, if... They if, are now recruiting the people... No, hang on. If the commission was going to do that and he had, he had taken it in good faith, we wouldn't have seen what we are seeing today with tabulation errors and all that. That is very unfortunate, I must say. But also remember, eh? remember that when you employ so many people, look at the number of people they employ. Hmm? You have about, I think, four or five of them to a center. Mm -hmm. And if you have about, uh, how many polling stations? About 30-something thousand polling stations in the country. Right. Definitely, um, you will get some of them who will not be that to what extent does politics play a role in the recruitment of temporary staff? Yes. Um, let me give you what normally the parties do, because I've been there before. Mm -hmm. If you are a regional director of electoral commission, and then a party man comes to tell you that, for example, I have 10 names here. They are my boys or my relatives or whatever, so please put them on board you have to reject it. Reject it in a sense So they usually come? The they politicians do. do? Yeah, the politicians do. Mm. They have names and they would want you to put them on board. Mm. You see, but the EC now has realized that these things are deliberately done. If you want a presiding officer who will sing the, 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 your song for you, mm. then he will bring him to you and then you will recruit him and then he can do whatever he wants to do. So it's dangerous. You would have to recruit it yourself, recruit the people, go inside. Look, I had a, a, a district officer in the Eastern region who would interview and even let them do handwriting. They, he would sit them in the classroom, put a sentence or two on the blackboard, and then they would write. He would look at their handwriting, when especially this? when we were going to do registration of voters. Uh -huh. Some could not write names of the applicants. So you need to some, you have somebody who would know how to write and spell mm -hmm. Ghanaian names correctly. Mm -hmm. And I, I really applauded him for that. He took his time to invite them and then if it's Ekua, Mansa or whatever, he will pronounce the name and then you will write, all of you will write. At the end of it, he will correct, collect the, 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 the scripts and then, oh, those who had it wrong, it means they will not be able to do their work and he will sack them. Some take meticulous care you know, mm. to, to really make sure that they get the right people. Are we, are we still taking that meticulous they are, care? They are taking it because it is part of what they have been asked to do now. Do you see evidence of that meticulous care? You 
will see evidence because you look through, sometime when you go to the centers and they are doing registration, and somebody is writing the name of Albert Ahin, you will look at it, and if he's writing it correctly, you will know. If he's also writing it wrongly, you will know. Mm. Yeah. I see. So then I take it as Kodeo is happy with the recruitment process? For now, because, you know, we, they were told to raise the qualification. Mm. To what? And the easy HNDs, mm. school leavers like, um, uh, you know, people who have been to all level, they have all level, all level, whatever. This is, these are the levels. No, that these days, I don't know how many of such we'll find, O level and A level. They, they are not there, but at least um, you get people who are, who are really okay. fine. Is this codified? Yes, the, the, these reforms are there. And mm. I, oh, I wish I had a copy of it so that I would show you the reforms that have been undertaken by the EC mm -hmm. with regards to what I'm talking about. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And, 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 and this has been in existence since... Um, I would say since the last election. Since the last election. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when we learned our first lesson, that we needed to put qualified people in, yes, in these places. Yes, and then also to also extend the time of training. No, then we are not serious. If, if we had to wait that long to put people, you know, no, qualified people No, but these things about there. correct and uh, wrong spelling, uh, wrong, uh, uh, what is it, resulting, just started appearing in the scene. Really? Um, you know, when is I was... Is case? When, I, when, I, when we were there, mm -hmm. when we were doing it, those days, there were people who were sending sometimes wrong, what is it, mm -hmm. calculations or whatever. But it was negligible. Right. So what I'm... All these things that we are talking about, uh -huh. they are negligible in the sense that if you have about a thousand results that have, are coming in, you have only about five that may be wrongly tabulated. They are not something that of, is of significance. But, but, but for, for, for an election, every mistake is important. Yeah, I know. And that is why 2020 ended the way it did. Yeah. You know, we have been told it's a slip of tongue, but I mean, Kodeo... No, I know. You can't pardon it, I know. Yes. Because it and, can and result so, in so, a fight. And so I'm going, yes, so I'm going somewhere with this. If before we were not having mistakes at this magnitude or of this magnitude and we are now then we need to find what the problem is do you think that as a country we've there been were able mistakes to do that? but except that you know maybe the noise this time or the political atmosphere is now so heated up look let me give you an example of what happened to me when i was the region director for the eastern region there was a return officer i recruited who, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. stole 10,000 votes okay. for the NPP. He's a very serious... That's the time they wrote the stolen verdict. Mm. Stole 10,000 votes. So, the result was announced. At that time, we were putting the results on, this, on the very big scoreboard raised at a, at a, a square in the, in the, in the city. We put the result there. We sent the copy of it to Accra. It was put on the national scoreboard as well. Mm -hmm. Then, around about, say, 10 p.m., 11, thereabouts, the NDC came. They had sat down to calculate, and they saw that they had been cheated by 10,000 votes. So, I tell you, it was really a very serious matter. We had put it on the scoreboard. So what do we do? Which is why systems have, uh, you know, are improved or are supposed to have improved yeah. up till now. So we had to go to the village or the Fantiaqua to collect all the boxes. We collected all of them, came to Kufoldia and recounted everything. We just wanted to establish the fact that indeed 10,000 votes have been added mm. unlawfully. And we discovered it was true. I see. You see, that's why I'm saying that what we are doing right now of correcting errors mm. is so important. Mm -hmm. 10,000 votes have been added to somebody's vote. And so he's made the person to win. And the return officer annoyingly was even jubilating over it when, when so, you know, it means that we had employed somebody who 
was a sympathizer of a particular party. I see. Because I hear he was even waving the white handkerchief, going around in a van, mm. jubilating with the, the rest of the people in town. Fostering trust is one of those things you recommended in 2020. What trust? Fostering trust between the Electoral Commission, the public, and the political party. Yeah. One of the important things you recommended in 2020. Yeah. How would you say that is going so far? It, is, it hasn't worked. The mistrust is mm -hmm. still here. Mm -hmm. Mistrust is still Why here. do you think it hasn't worked? It hasn't worked because I think maybe... Um, the communication between the EC and the other parties is not going on smoothly. Mm. You remember the NDC boycotted IPAC for a very long time. Absolutely. They just recently appeared there. Indeed. There's mistrust. And look at what happened when the BVRs or the laptops were stolen. Mm. To be honest with you, if we go through the procedure during registration, where at the end of the day, the list of all those who have, who have registered are printed and given to agents. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Those days, I don't know whether they do it now, right. when the parties send agents to the various centers, while the registration is going on, they also write names of the people who come to register. So if, for example, the NDC or NPP agent, and I come there to register, as soon as I mention my name, and the person is putting on the paper, then the agent of the party also writes it. And I'm telling you, they write it, and at the end of the day, they have also have a copy of the register. So what have we done now to improve What we have done now is that we have even, they now get a copy of the daily, daily registration. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you are getting the daily copies of the registration, Everything is transparent. You see whatever goes on at the center. Mm -hmm. What is it now that if a laptop is stolen, for example, you are scared that they are going to hide somewhere and then maybe do registration behind everybody's back. At the end of the day, the register is giving you. But that I goes to tell you that when the whole exercise is completed, you add up and you know what happened at the center. What? And you can compare it with that of the EC. So if things have pro improved for transparency, mm -hmm. why do you think that the mistrust still exists? Because it's not, it's not only mistrust, electoral commission and, uh, you know, and, the, and the political parties, but it's also the public's ability to trust uh, the electoral commission. The commission. So if, if transparency there, has improved, why are we still here? Yes, there's this thing. Let me tell you something. I have been with the EC for some time now. And... For a fact, you may check this up with, so you can ask somebody about what I'm going to tell you. Mm -hmm. Whenever a party comes to power, hmm? mm -hmm. in this country, mm -hmm. the EC becomes a friend. Be it party A, B, C, D, whatever. I don't know whether you have noticed this. Maybe you haven't taken Once time. Once a party goes into Once a position. Once a party goes into a position, the EC, is, 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 a, is a devil, a demon. Mm. And it has been happening to the big parties. This is, this, this is what is going on. Uh, is it for and, germane reasons or well, just political expediency? Maybe uh, for the reason I may not be able to tell. Mm. But this is what I have, I have observed. And other, other people too have observed this. Mm. You will find that a party in power is always talking for the EC and defending the EC. It has been done by both parties. The big parties, they have all done it before. Whenever they are in opposition, the EC is a devil. What are the implications when, of that? No, maybe it's because, you know, he who pays the piper calls the tune. That is the way I, that is my personal interpretation, maybe. Mm -hmm. I may be wrong. But why is it that when they are in opposition, they always cite, they, they, they don't go with the EC. Mm -hmm. Whatever the EC does is wrong. But when they are in power, the EC does no wrong. You ask anybody. This is an observation. And it's not, I'm not the only one who has mm -hmm. made this observation. Other people have made Real. it too. When we come back, I want us to discuss four critical issues 
women in politics, campaign financing, security of elections, and then a few more of your recommendations. Don't go away. We're still here with the National Coordinator for the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers, Kodeu. Albert Ahen is my guest today on Hot Issues. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ahen. Yeah. Have we got anywhere with dealing with the monster of campaign financing, political party campaign financing? We haven't gotten anywhere. We haven't gotten anywhere in the sense that, one, at a point in time in this country, the parties wanted government to finance the parties, mm. to sort of come in to assist them. It was done some time back mm. by way of providing them with equipment like computers, bicycles, vehicles. You see, unlike in other countries where fiscal money is giving them right. to do so many things. In this country, we've done it before because we ordered vehicles, and depending on the strength of your membership in parliament, mm -hmm. these things were distributed to you. So that, for example, if you have a, a, somebody, a one member, you know, parliamentarian, two member parliamentarian, whatever it is, you are kitted for. These things were done. But I don't think governments have heeded to this kind of uh, request because of finance. The country itself. Why do you have, think they can't heed to that request? Because maybe they, 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 the, the, the country itself doesn't have that money to be able to be dishing out to parties by way of financing mm. them. Okay. I, I don't think we have gotten to that level. Right. When we are not even financing parties, we are, we are really having problems. How about adding mm. it also to our... So we started but, giving... But, but at least they should, at this point, at this stage, all we can do to, you know... Level the play field, perhaps, will be, uh, you know, trans in transparency the, yeah. in, in where those campaign funds come from. Of course. That, is, that, is, that would be very nice so that you'll be having a level playing field. Yeah. Because the way it is now, they are left to fend for themselves by going elsewhere or whatever mm. to collect money. Okay. And so forth and so but they are supposed to be, uh, you know, given account to yes, the Electoral they Commission. Be, yes, they are supposed to be. Do they that. do it? Not at the time that I was with the Electoral Commission. How were, about now? Now, yes. I understand it's being seriously enforced now. I want us to talk about security. One of the um, issues you raised, which we all know about, it's you know, the killings that occurred in 2020. Yes. Uh, particularly those that took place in Tachiman. Tachiman that South thing is so sad in a sense that, and I, and I have always been, talk, Cody has been talking about it. Mm. You see, we want the police to, from time to time, tell Ghanaians what has come out of the investigations that they are doing. People's lives have been taken away from them. In the last election, I think about eight people were killed, isn't it? Yeah. If it's in court, what stage? has it got into. Mm. I remember we met some time back and somebody from the, the police force was telling us about what they had done so far. But is in, it, in the Tachiman South issue? Yeah. It's, they, it's not in court. So yeah. even Kodeo has forgotten about this What matter. we are saying is that, no, we keep reminding. We, we, look, any time there's a forum, we talk about it. Mm. Why can we forget about people who have died? You see, the problem we have in this country is that, for example, in this particular registration, there were some shots fired in the northern region. Have they been apprehended? If they have been apprehended, mm. they, sh you know, they should be taken to court immediately. And Kodi is always saying that when you catch them and you send them to court and mm. you sentence them or you give them a fine, it will serve as a deterrent mm -hmm. to other people who might also be planning in future to do you know, such a thing. But we always catch them, we don't act, we don't do anything, and so people do act with impunity every other time. Impunity, because Kwame was not punished. The other day, he ran away with a ballot mm. box. So if I should also do it, nothing should happen to me. 
But you see, we want people to be punished for crimes that are committed, especially in elections. How can you conduct a, a, a registration exercise and people will come and fire weapons mm. because somebody is suspected to be a minor? There are rules governing elections. Right. We have rules. Mm. If somebody is a minor, you fill a form and you give it to the appropriate authorities, they go and investigate. And then it will be... The matter is settled. The matter is settled. You don't have to take the law into your hands. No. Very well. And that's exactly what we are doing in this country. How would you score their conduct? If, if, you, were, the if you were given the... The GC? No, the political party, the two front run, runners, the political parties. If you were scoring the NPP and NDC regarding their conduct. No, I think sometimes they go overboard. Overboard? Yeah. Overboard. Overboard in the sense that there are issues that can be easily settled because the uh -huh. law is always there. The law is there. Mm. You see, it's not only even the two parties, all the, all the political parties. The they always have to remember that there are rules and regulations governing elections. Right. So all that I'm trying to say is that nobody should take the law into his or her hands mm -hmm. when it comes to matters concerning elections. Okay, just a bit more on that. Uh, did your observers who you sent across the country, uh, you know, observe any busing of minors as both political parties have treated uh, accusations of? Yes, there were, there were reports like that. Okay. Busing of uh, uh, prospective registrants to the various centers. And you know what, why they do that sometimes? If, for example, I contested you, mm -hmm in a particular uh, constituency and you were able to beat me with about maybe 10, 20 votes or 30 votes, very close, you know, they will bring people from the nearby constituency, close to that particular one, bars them to beef up. And you should know that sometimes, even though the community is big, people know who are there. Mm -hmm. They know them. So when you go and bring some people to come and beef up or to add up to your numbers, they will know. And these are the things that bring about the confusion at polling stations. Right. Because you see, registration is such that you should, on your own volition, walk to the center and write your name. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I don't even see the point in bringing people. But yes, they have to mobilize them, yes. But to the extent that they have to take a bus, go and put them in, and of course, I'm sure the argument is that they don't have the money because the distance is such that they cannot come. Because of the way sometimes we also go about it. We are doing it at the district center. Yeah. I'm staying about three, four mm -hmm. miles away. I cannot come. So that's, that, that itself is the problem. was problematic. Yes, problematic. Mm. So it means that the parties will have to mobilize, giving them transport to come to the place. But honestly, you don't have to bring somebody in a bus to come. You have to do it yourself and come and do it. And so it's, that's why it is wrong now. I think it's a, there's a law on bus. What's that law? There, there's something that, I don't know, I cannot quote it right now, but mm. it is wrong for you to bus people to centers. Okay. It is right. wrong. Why hasn't Kodeo said anything about vote buying? We saw it in the Edrisobai uh, election. Oh, we why saw have it, we been saw commented it, we saw a lot it in, on vote in the, in the district level election? My dear, we have been talking about it for a long time. You have. You are yes. tired now because you, you, it's Is still it, there. Yes. Look, the, what the guy did at the uh, Jisoo one is, 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 a, is, is a shame. Okay? If he had given the money to his own party agents, that would have been all right. I'm thinking that maybe you haven't eaten today, so I'm going around inspecting mm. what is going on. So take uh, 10 CDs. But you don't go and give money in an envelope to the EC officers. You are bribing them. Mm. That is bribery. Do you think the investigations will go anywhere? Well, I don't know. Because there's always not been going anywhere. Do you think and this one will go anywhere? I, I, I can't tell. I don't even know. You see, it is bad. It is bad, you see. And that's why I've always been telling you that if we set a precedence mm -hmm. by jailing one or two people for these things that happen, we might be getting somewhere. Very well. The Electoral Commission is rumored to declare results after 72 hours. Uh, the, the reason for that rumor is that 
uh, according to uh, the Electoral Commission of Ghana, and by that I don't mean the commissioner herself, but the story is attributed to the fact that there is no law uh, that dictates when election uh, our election results should be declared. You don't have any law like that. But election results delayed uh -huh. does not go well for any nation. When you delay election results, you increase tension, anxiety, you know, so many other things. Mm -hmm. So it's always the best thing to do to make sure that you declare within some reasonable number of days. I mean, what would be reasonable number in of Ghana, days? In Ghana, for example, if you declare results in three days' time, it is no crime. It's it is, no crime. It is within reasonable limits. Okay. More importantly, is it time we looked at the law so that we can stipulate exactly when we want to hear our results and what protocols should follow after that if we can't reach that time? Yeah, we can do something like that if we want to. It depends. But I don't think... Will it, it be helpful? I don't think it will even be necessary. Okay. It will not be necessary. You see, results are said that the EC knows it very well. When you declare it quickly, you have peace yourself. There was a time in this country if a pin dropped, those days when... The, the time one, mm -hmm. if anybody dropped a pin on the ground, because of the tension in the country, mm -hmm. you would hear it. You would hear the pin drop. So it's because it, of election results that are delayed. It's important to it's declare. It's important to make sure that, and the EC itself knows that it is good and it's in their own interest to make sure the results come in quickly so that they will be free and everybody will be free. And then it will reduce the tension in the country. Election 2024. Yeah. With all the problems that we see, do we envisage a credibility crisis? You know, going into the 2024 election on the day of the election on a declaration of results. We need. We have to be very careful. And I will, you know, give this advice to the EC in whatever they do. That. Whatever you do to party A, do it to party B. Mm. You see, in elections, you don't have to be biased. There should be equity. There should be fairness. You don't have to treat parties in a different way. Mm -hmm. If they all know that the level play, there's a level playing field, they are all going by the same instructions and whatever, you meet them, you tell them your piece of mind, whatever, instructions. You don't give instructions to party B and give a different one to party C. The moment you start doing that, you, have, you, you, you are really digging your own grave. Mm. You see, so if we do all these things by making sure that we do our ballot printing, there's no problem, our officers are well trained, they go to the polling stations and they administer the election in a very fair manner, I don't think the parties will have any cause to complain. They will lose and come and tell you that they know they have lost, but they, they know, know why they have they lost. Are lost. Mm. You did well in this election. This is the kind of election that we want for this country. Mm. An election where the parties will congratulate the winners, and then the EC itself will know that, ah, we have delivered an incontrovertible, you know, uh, an election that is not, uh, you know, that cannot be, you know, somebody will not go and sit somewhere and be talking about it that is fraudulent. Mm. No. If you're able to do that, you don't have a problem. Do you think the EC has proven itself trustworthy at this point? The EC is trustworthy. No. Have they proven themselves trustworthy at this point? At this point? Yes. In their history? Or you, know, you at mean this at this point, point? Given all the things that have happened. I would think they have, in a certain manner, done it. In a certain, in a certain manner. manner. Yes, they have. You see, when you have people not trusting you, mm. there's a lot of mistrust in this country, you know. Yeah. And what, what, what baffles me is the fact that most of the time, the distrust or the mistrust is even coming from the educated. It doesn't make it bad. No. Perhaps they know more. You see... Sometimes when people tell me that elections are rigged at polling stations and uh -huh. people stuff and that kind of thing, because I've been in the thing for a very long time. Right. 
I find it difficult. The system that we are operating in this country, I find it very difficult to believe that we steal elections in this country. You don't think it's possible? It is, it is all absolutely, you know, something very difficult to achieve. Mm, I see. What can the Electoral Commission do to improve public trust, you know, am, am, amongst Ghanaians? The Commission can do the... You know, you go with the people. For example, this uh, idea of always coming out to give press conferences, Mm -hmm. The EC started doing that in the last election. Uh, they termed it, there was a term they gave to it. Let the people, Let the know, people know. know it was something like that. You know, intermittently you come out. Explain the procedures to the people. Okay? When at the polling station there's a, a problem, the presiding officer should be able to, using you know, the procedures. The but it, it, it's at the same uh, press conferences that they have been doing 360 or whatever they tell us. They'll tell us a, the next press conference will turn around and say, oh, A is not, no, no longer working. We are going with B. We can't trust such, as a, such an institution. No, but you see, you are judging them using one error, maybe just one. This letter committee that we have in this country is one of the best in Africa. Thank you for coming. Albert Ayan has been my guest on Hot Issues. He's the national coordinator for the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers, Kodeo for short. Thank you so much for watching. If you missed uh, you know, this show, there's always a playback on Facebook and YouTube. I am Kemeni Amano. Bye-bye.